Today's guest is a well-loved Broadway leading lady with, count them, five Tony Awards to her name. She's currently starring in the hit Broadway revival of the Gershwin's Poor Game Best, which also won the Tony for Best Revival of a Musical. Please welcome Audra McDonald. Hello. So thrilled you're here. Thank you, Thank Paul. you for coming. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm very excited you're here. And I think it's funny, I actually woke up really early this morning, like which never happens, and, <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. So I had myself a... Audrey McDonald YouTube concert. I'm so sorry. There, that early in the morning? There's so many s full songs. You can literally just have like a customized, <laughs> it's like you can have like a customized Audrey McDonald concert. You can just With sit there. And different just, heights of hair. <laughs> just oh, yeah, it's awesome. The, yeah, the hair, the different <laughs> levels. I still love the big, that, that look. Oh, the big, yeah. The big look. My daughter asked me why I don't wear my hair like that, <laughs> you know, for you know, publicity, what's the answer? Because it, it, it's just too scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's too scary. Mommy can't control it anymore. So, do you have uh, Audrey McDonald YouTube concerts ever? Do you ever sit there and? No, <laughs> no, no. That's just that's just that's fresh hell for me. I do not like to watch myself on TV or really? listen to myself sing. I, it's it's fresh hell. My favorite numbers I'm going to tell you are "Down with Love." Okay. I love down. I mean, I can't get enough of you singing down with love. Oh, that was belty. I love the. Uh, I, yeah, you're gonna, this is gonna tell probably a lot about me. Uh -oh. I love the. Uh, I love the Andrew Lloyd Webber trio. Oh. Where you sing love changes everything. Yeah, that that uh, was hard. That that that's pretty incredible. You know why that was hard? Because what? that's usually sung by two women and a man, and the okay. man is tenor. Uh -huh. So David Loud did that great yeah. arrangement, but I sang the tenor part. Uh huh. So it's yeah. actually a bit high. Okay. for a woman, uh -huh, so uh -huh. um, that's just my excuse for any notes that might have been a little funky, but go ahead. And I loved, <laughs> and I, and I loved See What I Want to See. I love See What I Want to oh, See. Oh, Michael John, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's a great that's song. A great, I enjoy singing yeah. that one. Yeah. So anyway, they're all good. Everybody needs to check out all of those, but, but there are like <laughs> hundreds of songs. Yeah. You've been doing this for a while. A little bit, but I'm still so young. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you I'm are young. I'm still only 22. What? So is it, uh, is it very last month, talk about the Tony Awards? <laughs> the Tony Awards. <laughs> I, uh, well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> You've got your finger on the pulse of Broadway. No, it is not. It is very exciting. <laughs> you had an amazing night. I want to thank you for giving an emotional speech because I hate when people don't give emotional speeches. Uh, well, I, you know, you, you don't plan no You don't plan it. You right. really don't. You know, <laughs> and the whole night I had been sort of, you know, we've been focusing on a lot of things. One is we had a performance that afternoon and then we had to perform that night. And yeah. so I knew I had to get backstage, get my costume on and, and get, you know, my, lovely hair that my hairstylist worked so hard on, Chama worked so hard on, we had to get it all up into, you know, the wig and then take it out. Yeah. And the kids, you know, were looking great and I wanted to make sure they were still happy and not getting antsy. And, yeah. and then Zoe kept saying, Mommy, what if you don't win? She was so worried. And I wow. was like, honey, it's okay. It's no big deal if I don't. It's, you know, it's, that's not what the night's about. We're just here to have a huh. good time. So there was a lot that you're trying to keep together. So then when they actually call your name and you go up there, you fall. <laughs> You fall apart. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Well I, well, I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you for falling apart. Yeah, I fell apart. <laughs> and now we all know uh, February 14th, 2001. Yes. It, it, you, you, you had this beautiful, I mean, probably, this is probably like one of my favorite award show things ever, what you said to your daughter. Uh, well, I, which, which is basically that, as great as this night is, that was still, the yeah. day you were born was still the, the best night of my life. Did, did you think about that ahead of time, that you wanted to say that? Well, I, you know, I, I knew that if I won, I wanted to make sure that, so, I mean, I knew that I would talk about her and say thank you yeah. to her, and yeah. um, especially since you know the past four years have been really difficult because I've been gone so much. Work has yeah. kept me away, and um, and it's we're just getting used to finally you know me being home on a regular basis, and actually in a way we're we're a little more clingy now, Zoe mm. and I, because it's 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 harder now because mm. she you know, mm -hmm. um, so. I just didn't know what I was going to say, but I knew that I wanted her to know how much I love her and how much she means to me. And, and I also wanted her to know how, how hard, I know how hard it's been on her. Mm. And then it just came out like that. I don't know. What did she say afterwards? What did she say? She just, she just was so excited. She's like, I love you, mommy. You're the best mommy in the world. Uh. And, and, you know, and she was so excited about that. You won, you won, you won. And, and they were just, they just had a great time. They just played with the award and, we're is jumping it, up and down. And is it fun to go to the Tonys as a family? It was. Yeah. Sometimes it can be very stressful, yeah. but it was a lot of fun because 
they were having such a good time. They were just the right age, I think, too, you know. And they, they go to a lot of theater, you know, and they spend a lot of time in the theater, too, you know, either yeah. at Will's show or, or at my show. They're backstage a lot. So um, it's, it's, it's like a second home for, for them. They're very used to it. So um, they enjoyed themselves. I mean, as, as much as all of us, because it was so hot in that theater, the air conditioning was not working in the theater, so everybody was sweating their tits off. And, <laughs> and even with that, I thought, oh, this might make them grumpy. And they stayed just, they just had a great time. I was so proud of them, so proud of them. Do, are they, yeah, w when Will was here, he talked about how uh, his boys know all the gay disco classics. <laughs> yes. now. You know, they know the lyrics to, yes. to all the great gay disco classics, thanks do. to Priscilla. They do they, do. Do, they, uh, are, do they, are they enjoying it? Do they love, do they like Broadway? Or, I mean, you're kind of forcing Broadway on them a little bit. Well, we're not, we are, we aren't. It's just sort of like, this is what we do. Yeah. You know, so you're coming to work with me today. Yeah. You know, either it's yeah. like the babysitter can't come in or I haven't, seen you because you've been in school during the day and I'm at, I'm at home and then when I when you get home I leave so it's like yeah. you're gonna come with me so I can spend some time with you so right. they just they're just very used to it all it's not it's not anything you know I mean they they enjoy the numbers and they're used to them and they hear them but they're not um, like oh god it's this Broadway thing I have to deal with or they're not like oh wow it's Broadway it's just you know they'll come backstage and David Allen Greer will say hi to Zoe and she'll be like hi <laughs> No, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's kind of no big deal to them. What about the stage door and the fans? And the, that, Will, Will talked about the, also the, the stage door. There's always Audrey McDonald freaks waiting. It's a, it's a little overwhelming for Zoe. That yeah. gets a little overwhelming. She gets very clingy with that. And then I get a little nervous. I remember doing Raisin in the Sun one time. Um, Zoe was very little. She was three. And I it was coming out the stage door. And most of the fans were there to see Diddy, you know. Yeah. Um, and they were excited about it. P. Diddy, but they were really grabby, and one was like, can I can I get you to sign this autograph? And I was like, and I had Zoe, and she was a little clingy that day, so I was just holding on to her, and then she said, I'll hold the baby, I'll hold, I was like, whoa, 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 right. whoa, no, you yeah. won't, right. no, you won't, no, and so I was just like, oh, no, 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 and I just kind of walked away after that, so yeah. it's still a little overwhelming for her as far as that's concerned. But, but people don't realize how tough the, the stage door can be. You know, it's, it's the, a lot. The stage door, it's an interesting thing, and because, I don't remember it being like this when I first started out on Broadway. Yeah. I don't remember the stage door being that crazy. And maybe it's always been, but I, I don't remember that for like Carousel. I mean, mm -hmm. there was always a few people, but never like what it is now with you know with the barriers. Nobody can find the stage door at the Vivian Beaumont. That's that's true. <laughs> ha! That's that's the joy. And and it's not that we don't love seeing the fans afterwards, but when you've done your show. Um, and then there's a lot of fans that wait after stage door. You're going out and you're spending literally another half yeah. hour, yeah. sometimes to 45 minutes. Yeah. before you can even get home. Um, and so sometimes it's, it's a lot and it's overwhelming. It's almost like you have to do another show in right. a way, even though yeah. it's wonderful because you're, yeah, you're expressing their appreciation and, you're, and it's a digital age, so everybody wants a picture. Yeah. And, but it's a, it's, it's a lot, it's, yeah. it's, it's a challenge. They love you, but they need to go home at some point. Well, yeah, you know, and then also, <laughs> I mean, like, because I was just on vocal rest, um, yeah. I, my doctor, when she allowed me to go back into the show, she was like, you still can't talk. You can do your show, but other than that, you need to yeah. be quiet. So I was stage dooring, but I was not allowed to talk. Yeah. So the fans were like, I'm like, you can talk. I can't talk. They like, were so good. So talk. So that was, that was, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. <laughs> they were sweet though. And they were, they were very quiet and they were all like, shh, she can't talk. Shh. So they were all, it was very funny. So let's talk about the obvious Tony topic. So I'm wearing a tie today. I never wear a tie on this show. I like your tie. But I've never had a five-time Tony winner here. Your tie matches the, you were just trying to match your set. Well, yeah, I mean, I wear the right color tie, but I don't <laughs> usually wear ties. But I put a tie on because you Thank have five you. Tony Awards. That, that's not a reason to put on a tie, but I, I like that you did. But I mean, but you, you're keeping it casual on the bottom. You yeah, got we got jeans. jeans. Yeah, I right. had the jeans too. It's, it's good. all good. So, uh, yeah, so how about that? You're now a, you're tied, uh -huh. right? With the, for the record, yeah. with two ladies, uh, two Julie Harris and Angela Lansbury. Yes. So how does that feel? It doesn't feel does, like anything because right. I can't feel it. Right. And that's just the truth. Yeah. People say, I, I can't feel it. Yeah. You know, I, for me, I, it happened, and then there was that moment where I was sort of out of my body and on stage, and they handed me this Tony, and everybody was telling me, you have five Tonys now. You have five Tonys now. I was like, I have five Tonys now. Right. And it's like, my house is still so dirty. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I turned 42. I still can't 
organize my closet. <laughs> I still had mounds of la laundry. Uh -huh. I think there's a part of you that thinks, I win five Tonys, suddenly I live in Disneyland where the, right, right. You know, where the, 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 the birds come and, and float on my finger in the morning. Yeah. But it, you know, life is still life. Yeah. And I still gotta go do a show. And um, so it, it's never hit me. It's an incredible honor. And maybe one day it'll hit me, but um, I'll probably be um, postmenopausal when that happens. I don't. Are they? Well, well, by then you'll have more. Are, are, they, are, they, are they all together? Do they? No, they're in different places. Um, they're, you know, they're in different places in the house, um, like on shelves. And some are shorter than others too, right? Yes, they and one the actually, one it was a, a fifty-year anniversary, I think, and so one had a gold rim. Oh. It was short and it had a gold rim, but then the 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 medallion was still silver, right? Um, and then it had a gold plate on the front. So they they're all actually a little bit different. So they all would actually probably look terrible if they put them all together. They they, they would look a little. Them. They would they would look like they were relatives, but they wouldn't look like quintuplets. Uh -huh. Yeah, at all. <laughs> but I I don't. They're not prominently displayed in the house. Um, nothing is because the house is such a mess. I mean, you know, what's prominently <laughs> displayed in the house are like dog chew toys and and Legos and and things like that. But the Tonys are not. Well, it'll be exciting to see you go for six. <laughs> oh I can't help it. You're, very, you're a very young lady. We have a, there's, a lot, there's a lot of Broadway ahead for you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You are loved. You are loved on Broadway. Well, I, I have to say, I, it's really the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Yeah. It really is. It's the, only yeah. Thing. it's the only thing I've ever known how to do. It's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. It's the only thing I ever as aspired to do. We... Uh, harass Tony nominees with some silly questions at the Tony brunch and we asked yes. you one of the questions was what was your first Broadway show and you gave a very funny answer because you lied and then you corrected yourself. No, I, I said what I you remember. You said Into the Woods. Yes. Which, which is I, a very highbrow. What, 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 I remember that as being like the one that I was overwhelmed and I was in New York and I was auditioning for Juilliard and I saw Into the Woods right. like the night before my audition but I forgot that I had come to New York the year before with my drama class and the first show we saw was Starlight Express. That's There's not what you call it. That. <laughs> Starlight Express. <laughs> Starlight Ex Express. You added a word in there. I did not. <laughs> I did not. I'm going to be like Mitt Romney. I don't remember saying that. Well, no, how no. was Starlight Express? Was that fun? You know, at the time, I just remember... It was major. It was It was huge. major, and it was all the, the skating and just everybody around, yeah. but I couldn't tell you the story for the life of me. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can. I can't tell you that story. Yeah. I can't tell you the plot. It was like cats on skates. It, from, yeah, yeah. Basically, there was sort Trains, of like... Trains, racing. Yeah, and there was some heavy side layer that you went to, some diner in yeah, the sky. I, I don't so. know. Yeah, The I, Light at the End of the Tunnel. Yeah, okay, That was yeah. a big song. <laughs> was yeah. it really? Yeah, yeah. There's a light... No, over There's at the Frankenstein place. That's Rocky Horror oh, Picture Show. Oh, you almost show. had it. But you actually, that, you started to sing the Starlight Express song. Really? <laughs> yeah. Did Andrew Lloyd Webber There's get it from? There's a light at the end. It was a big Tony. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, it was on the Tonys. I'd it's a big roller skating number. I'm not slamming anybody in that show, but it, it didn't. <laughs> I just don't remember it other than just like colors and wheels. Have you ever uh, roller skated on stage? No, but I tell you what, I was a damn good roller skater at Roller Town in Fresno, California. Nice. On uh, Peach Avenue. We go and we have our <laughs> birthday parties there. And, you know, I would roller skate backwards. I'd do the thing where you go down and you shoot the duck, you know, and you're roller yeah, skating yeah. down. I'd do wow. that. Um, me and my friends, we would like do like Devlip Hayes while we were like roller skating on one leg. And then the only thing I wished I was able to do was in those days, because it was like the early 80s, people still had lots of feathered hair, yeah. and they would roller skate backwards, <laughs> and I'm not kidding, you'd uh -huh. take out their comb, <laughs> <laughs> their hair. And then back in the back and pocket. And back in the back yeah, pocket. Yeah, yeah. I, had, but I remember because, those combs. Yes, yeah. but because I had very frizzy Afro <laughs> hair, I couldn't, <laughs> I could have, I, I, I should have picked it out. <laughs> God, I'm gonna go back to Fresno, go to Roller Town, and like put an Afro pick in my head. Are you open to roller skating on stage? Maybe as we go for that sixth Tony Award. Maybe, maybe that's what it's gonna be. No, I, I'm open. Yeah, I'm, heck yeah, I'd roller skate. I'm good. You'd be surprised. I'm actually very good roller skate. Maybe wait. wait. This would be a fun. I talent. used to be. I haven't roller skated in this decade, so we'll see. Maybe it's gone south. You, you did some great cartwheels in 110 The Shade. That was fun. Yeah, oh my God. The first time I saw it, I was like, you know she what? could do that too. You know, you know why it got actually bigger and bigger? Because I loved this um, uh, John Col uh, Cullum's 
reaction to it <laughs> because he'd say, oh, Audra, don't do you're gonna give me a heart attack. I keep thinking you're gonna fall down. So the next time I'd try and kind of do a bigger <laughs> one just to see what he'd do. He'd be like, oh God, stop it. So for me that was was fun about it. Wow. <laughs> Um, as you mentioned, you grew up in Fresno. Yes. Do you remember when you were a kid? I'm assuming, because when I was a kid, remember there was that Fresno miniseries? It was like a spoof yes. of Dallas. That, that's yes. what I know Fresno from, that the Carol Burnett. Yes, everybody. There was one line um, where someone was saying, she says, there are the haves and there are the have nots. And he says, do I have the job? And he, she says, you have not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was, I remember protesting it in my own stupid. The, the, t the miniseries? Yes, because only one scene was actually fil filmed in Fresno, uh. but the rest was filmed in like, filmed in like Tulare or Visalia or all these other places that made Fresno look even smaller than it actually was. Uh, and so okay. I was very upset. I had serious faux rage at the it's age of. It's fun to know what you were fired up about. Fired up at 12. <laughs> the Carol Burnett miniseries. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, um, and I think our mayor at the time got to be in the one scene that they shot in, in our town of Fresno by the water tower. Um, you, I, I was doing a little research, and you played a Vita when you were 17? 16. I, that, yeah. Is there video of that? There may be. I know there is video documentation yes. of some of your childhood. Yes, there, there, there wow. probably is. It was at my dinner theater, and um, uh, I was double cast. It was me and another very good friend of mine named Lindsay June Garbett. And uh, we were double cast in the in the part of uh, Evita, and it was so interesting because I was a I was a junior in high school, uh, and uh, I was doing the show at night and then going to school during the day, and I remember some of my friends saying I got a little snarky in classes. I started kind of talking back to my high school teachers that year, and I think it probably had a little bit to do with the fact that I was just playing this, you know, I I, I wouldn't call Ava Perona a snarky woman. <laughs> but um, she certainly had some balls, and I just kind of, I took my character home a little bit. Well, Patty Lapone says in her memoir that your friend Patty Lapone that Ava haunted her, the real Ava. So maybe Ava was like, Coming you know, around, maybe she was haunting possible. that dinner theater. Maybe she might go from production to production. Yeah, that I'm sure that's exactly what was going on. <laughs> but I got put in place. I got put in my place back in my high school for sure. Do you ever sing any of those songs? You, do you want to sing like Rainbow High right now or no? I don't want to sing anything right now. <laughs> right. Well, that's no, true. It's too no, early. off off stage no, singing. I'm not allowed. <laughs> um, no, you know, it's so interesting. I do also remember at that time being so obsessed with it and studying. I mean, I think it's one of the first roles that I really like researched, uh -huh. you know, at 16. I was like, I, I got to know who she was. And I had all the books on her and I had pictures of Ava Perone on my wall, but I had a bunch of pictures of Patty on my wall too, because I was so obsessed with Patty. Um, and Lilius White. And Lilius White from uh, sh the tour of Dreamgirls. Okay, so that, I was trying to figure out why you Lilius she played Effie in the Dreamgirls yeah. tour, right? Yeah, so I had the, the program from that and I had her picture up. And, and now um, you work with all these people. And I now not they're only, friends. And not only do I, this is where this is this is the stuff that does hit me, that I work with Patty yeah. and I adore her, and I and I've worked with Lilius and I love her and yeah. I call her friend, and yeah. that's that's when I get kind of. That's when it hits me. Right. It's like oh my gosh, I I grew up admiring you and yeah. adoring you, and now I admire and adore you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that's. That's where it gets me. And there's great clips of you singing with both of them on YouTube, again, <laughs> for the Audra McDonald customized <laughs> YouTube concert. 6.30 a.m. concert. <laughs> How'd you know what time that was? I, I called you. No. <laughs> um, I, th I found this fun interview with you when you were doing Aveda. I'm sure you see it's online, um, and, an and it's really funny. Your all-time favorite TV show was The Jeffersons at that point, so I think maybe, maybe Tony number nine could be like, you could be wheezy in like a stage... Maybe I don't know. You're 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 a few years off from Wheezy. I well, I'm not that far off. I don't know. Yeah, maybe <laughs> Wheezy. Wheezy. Jefferson's the musical. Uh, yeah. Get on it, Michael you John. Could, you could really exactly. You could legitimize that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the best thing is, you say in the shower I sing, and you said opera because I know I can't do it in public. Which I is such that, a, which is true. Which which was true at the that's time. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's so crazy to to think that that girl then. <laughs> Right? Where did you find this? It's online. You just go on. Who do you know? <laughs> I'm serious. You guys get shit. You could find it. You could find it if you try really hard. Okay. But obviously, you can sing opera in public now. That's always been a very scary thing for me. Yeah. Still, I mean, even up until the day that I had to do it in public. It's yeah. very scary, scary. 
And you are obviously playing uh, bass and poor game bass, and it's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful production and a beautiful performance. Thank but you. obviously, everybody knows that you've been having trouble with the vocals. Yeah. So let's let's talk. What is that? I, I can't imagine what that's like to sort of. It's kind of like your body's giving out on you, right? I mean, well, what, what happens what does it feel is, like for you? well, what happens is you you know we're doing eight shows a week. Yeah. Um, I'm now doing seven shows a week, but mm -hmm. we're doing eight eight shows a week. We were, and. Um, there's a couple of things. You know, my daughter's in a school and she comes home and you get germs all the time. You know, that's yeah. just any parent will tell you that, you know. And then you're working in a theater that's closed in, yeah. you know, closed off and, and close quarters. And then, you know, I, I make out on stage with Norm and Philip. Yeah. I'm also snorting happy dust off of right. Philip's hand, David's hand, off of the floor. So all these things. Which is caffeine. It's, yes, it's, it's powdered caffeine. <laughs> um, but all these things, uh, you know, you, you're going to get sick. Yeah. And then you get sick and you still try and do your show. So you sing and sing and sing and sing until all of a sudden the voice is just not there anymore. So then comes the stress of what's going on. So you go to the doctor and the doctor says, okay, well, your cords are swollen up to a point where if you keep singing on them, A, you probably won't be able to get anything out. Yeah. B, you can sustain, you could sustain ser serious damage. You know, like you could get, you could hemorrhage or you could, you know, blow a blister or something oh. like that. So then it's like, what do I do? Do I try and push through and, you know, po possibly ruin myself? You know, everybody has the Julie Andrews example yeah. in their head. Yeah. Or do I listen to my doctor? Meanwhile, you know, you've got people saying crap about you in the newspapers and all that stuff. You know, meanwhile, you're at home. People think, I don't, I don't know if people think that we're at home just eating bonbons going, that's right, I'm not doing the show right. today. I, I feel like it's a chocolate day for me. No, yeah. we're at home freaking out at the doctor, spending thousands of do dollars at yeah. the doctor, getting your cords looked at, you know, trying to figure out how do I do this? What do I do? It's a terrible situation. Yeah. And singing is very difficult and it's a very athletic thing that we do. And, you know, I, can, I know I speak for every Broadway singer. It's, as our, it's our livelihood too. So do you blow out your voice on one show, one night, and then not be able to sing for either the rest of the show or the rest of your life? You know, you, it's, it's a very difficult thing. Can you see I'm a little passionate about this? It's a very difficult thing. So it's, it's a very stressful situation. But you're right, situation. there's a perception because you, you, you hear like, oh, well, Audra's not in the show, and you don't think about the reality of you. Where, as, where do they think I am? Right. I mean, do they think that I'm at Disneyland? <laughs> right. Do they, do they think that I'm, right. you know, swimming, swimming, you know, or, yeah. or, getting, or having some cabana boy, you know, massage my feet? And <laughs> No, you're, right. you're yeah. at home crying. Yeah. You're at, on the phone with the doctor. You're trying to be quiet, you're staring at pictures of your vocal cords, willing them to look better than they do. Yeah. It's a frightening, yeah. frustrating situation. I'm happy that you're talking right now. <laughs> so, so, so this isn't a problem that you're doing this interview and then you're singing the show well, tonight? Well, you, you do have to, I, I, we do have to be very, we have to, um, you dole it out yeah. in, in very small increments. Like we're like, okay, today will be an interview day and then I can't do any more tomorrow right, or right. the day after or whatever. You have to... It's 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 kind of unfair. It's unfair to your family, I think, mm. in the long run, because they're the ones that you're like, well, I can't talk now that I'm at home. It's yeah. like, but you've been, you talk to this person, you talk to this right, person, right, and right. now you're writing down, I love you too, sweetie. Do you want to mouth to each other the rest of the interview? Like at the. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's good. <laughs> we'll just type out some words <laughs> for people. <laughs> but no, it's 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 frustrating and hard. It really is. So have you had any? And I know you you still have a couple more months left with the mm -hmm. show. Do you have any moments where you just get to sort of like, just chill out? I mean, I, it, it, seems, it seems like such a difficult life right, right now. Are you just sort of plowing through? You just I mean, plow through. And it's an emotional show, yeah. obviously. Yeah, I think, you know, also for those of us who do shows and our, our parents, yeah. you know, like we finish the show. Uh, I usually get out of the, uh, to the stage door by about 10.45, which means then I'm stage dooring until about 11.15, 11.30. Yeah. Then you get in your car and you go home, and during the school year, by the time I go to bed at one, I have to get up at six to get my kid to school, and then you know do that on a Wednesday, and then I have to go do two shows. You know what I mean? So it, there's there's really no downtime. Right. So you just uh, you just kind of plow through, you know, and then go that there's you a definitely there's a light at the end <laughs> of the tunnel. How are the song goes? Kind of have it. Yeah. There's some clapping in it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You definitely don't have time for an Audrey McDonald YouTube concert. Oh God, no! And I wouldn't. I told Fresh Hell. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that. It's Fresh Hell. We can't uh, not.
talk about uh, your adorable fiance, Will Swenson, <gasps> who sat in that chair and gushed about you. He did. Got very emotional about you. Uh, he's a pretty great guy, huh? I love him. The most important question is his hair growing back. <laughs> I mean, because you know, we know him from hair. He's a hairy guy, and then he did Priscilla, and he yes, was smooth as a baby. Smooth as a baby. It's growing back. In fact, he's, um, he's, you know, he's had some a couple of weeks off. He, he's he's no longer has weeks off, but he did have a couple of weeks off, yeah. and he was just. We were up at the house, and he was chopping wood and growing out his beard and growing out his legs and his chest hair. And for me, it's like, oh, this man, I've got a man. <laughs> Not that I didn't before, but I had a very, you know, a man who sometimes was more clean shaven than I was. But now I've got like just this manly man around the house, you know, chopping things up <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, working on the house. And it's, um, it's great. And he, he loves it. It's, it's, I mean, we're having a great time. We're, you know, planning our wedding. I know. So how's that going? It's going well. It's kind of, we're so excited. Are you always thinking about it? Are you, are you, is there a lot to figure out or what are your colors? What are the colors? Oh, see, that, <laughs> I haven't gotten to my colors oh, yet. Okay, okay. For me, it was like, well, what are we eating? Food. Yeah. Just, what are we eating? Food. What are we drinking? <laughs> okay, that, those yeah. are the main things. Um, we actually went and um, picked out our, our wedding rings yesterday. Nice. And, um. I was worried because people were going to see me without my engagement ring and think that, oh God, what's going on, you know, but... Um, nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Love. No, we're madly in love. And um, he's just, he's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. Um, and the engagement ring is, was his mom's. It uh. was her ring. It's a very beautiful um, opal. And, and she passed away yeah. seven months before I met him. Yeah. And. Um, so that he gave me his mom's ring, she left it to him, that he gave that to me was also just sort of uh, kind of earth shattering for me. So the wedding's after you finish Poor Game Bass? Yeah. And then, what do you, vacation? What's, what's, what, what, do you, what do you do after all this? Yeah, uh, we take a nap. We take a nap. <laughs> I'm, this is the, can I, I I'm gonna brag about something. This is gonna sound so stupid. But I, I have a puppy who drives me crazy. Uh -huh. We have one dog that's three years old and then we have, and he drives us crazy too. And we have this puppy named Georgia, who's just very difficult, but we love her, but she's a lot. And we sent her to this border to train her for two weeks. Mm. And <laughs> yep, two weeks when she came back, we thought, oh, she's gonna be so well behaved. Not only was she, had she not changed at all, but the, the woman gave us back our money and just was like. <laughs> <laughs> and then yesterday, we got a call that she had gotten into the, the new skeet monks, the ones, the, the, the monks that train dogs yeah. upstate. I didn't know about these. Yes, I, these I monks that train dogs. Okay, I need that number and jo too. So Georgia's going to go be with Jesus for a little bit. <laughs> we're like, Georgia got into divinity school. We're so excited. And we're like, if Jesus can't fix Georgia, then... <laughs> and nobody can. But we're so excited, so I just had to share. That's exciting. I'm so, I'm, it's, it's renewing my faith in religion. I really that think is that. hilarious. I think George is going to find Jesus and it's all going to be good. <laughs> she's going to stop. It's all going to come together. Yeah, she's going to stop peeing the house and ripping things <laughs> apart. I just know it. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for coming. It's thank such an you. honor to have you here. Thank you for your time. And, and you're welcome. <laughs> it feels good. Your tie and your time. <laughs> Thank you, Audra. Thanks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.